don't think this one works particularly. You can see the there's three trees here. I've tried from back uh, where you've just seen the last bit of B roll and I've come closer. From back there you can only see two trees. Uh, the one in the distance, this one here, is hidden behind the other one. And now I'm closer. I'm just not getting that same compression, the same light <coughs> that was, I was getting from down the, from further back. You get that sort of light coming through. I'm not getting that here. The whole shot's very flat. I must apologise for the road noise. Uh, I'm in a very large woods. I just happen to be walking through a section I've never walked through before. <coughs> uh, just run out of the road. <laughs> uh, it's quite a busy road for lorries, so uh, do apologise for the, the lorry noise. I don't really like it. It kind of goes against uh, why I come to the woods. That's why I don't come here very often. But there are some fantastic old ancient oaks in this woodland, so it's hard to ignore them. I hear woodpeckers and birds. And the big Scania. It's a woodpecker. I've also heard lots of monk jack calling, which is a very unsettling noise when you're in the woods on your own. If you've ever heard a monk jack, it's hard to explain, but it's a, uh, Google it, it's a, it's an awful noise. When it's dark and gloomy and you're the only one in the woods, it is unsettling. Let's keep looking anyway. The conditions are not in my favour. It's overcast, so I'm not going to get any harsh light. But I do think I'm not going to get any light at all. Um, but on the plus side, it's very damp, it's very muddy, uh, which really makes the uh, colours pop in the woods, especially when it's like this. It's new growth as well, so it's very green. Yeah, it's going to be a tricky one, but I'm looking forward to uh, seeing what I come away with today. If it's just a scout mission, at the very least. Right, let's get going. I don't suppose you can see what I can see back here. There's like a, there's like a clearing. There's some nice oaks shapes all in the distance down down there. Uh, I just caught my eye over the main path. And that's things that I look out for when I'm. Uh, shooting in woodland is things like that or I can eliminate the sky pick out uh, a little vignette um, amongst a very green scene there's lots of nice oak branches and fresh growth with the dark wet limbs and then the sort of shots that can work uh, in very chaotic woodland with lots of new growth, lots of green vibrance. It's hard to get them layers. Uh, yeah, I always tend to look for stuff like this. It helps me, uh, helps me pick up shots when I look further into the distance. 
I'm gonna have a look at it with a long lens. See, uh, see if I like it. Yeah, I'm going to have a go at this one, so I'm just going to walk around my camera now and just pick out, move, moving left and right uh, and also get up and down, although because I'm shooting far, far away into the distance up and down ain't really make much difference it's going to be tiny little left and right because there is a couple trees down here I want to say I can't remember if it's is it them ones there or them ones there, it's hard for me to tell on this camera. But I want to sort of line, I'm not sure whether I want to line two up, one behind the other. Or to hide it, to clean the image up. Or I can come over to this side and open that gap up between and deliberately separate them. Um, it really depends whether I want this tree here to be over to the right of my frame more. Or I want it to be more central. Uh, I haven't quite made my mind up, and until I look through my camera, look through the, the viewfinder, I'm not really going to know that. So I'm going to do that now, and then we'll get the tripod out, and I'll talk you through exactly why I took this image, what, why I framed this image up. Right, so I just want to talk exactly about what my thought process is, this is what I was talking about earlier, um, excuse the dodgy video and excuse <laughs> this tree on the right here, um, that's not going to be in the frame, it's going to be more like, I'm going to frame it more like this, cutting that sky out, but you can see this tree in the middle here, and the oak in the background that's in the middle, this is a, the dilemma I have, do I include it like this? Or do I move to the right? And I hide it like that. Now I'm more inclined to do this just because I think it tidies the image up a bit. And this oak on the right is the tree that I really call my eye. And I quite like the fact that this one that's now, you can't see, this one. Um, in the background we've just hidden is kind of uh, like giving you the oh, what's the word I'm th looking for Intri um, not, it's not intriguing you but it's like enticing you into it's, it's an air of mystery into what's going on in behind there whereas if I include it there is no mystery it is, it is what it is and I quite like the fact that this tree here is the main focus uh, and these trees just help pull pull the eye in and I can go a little bit wider but then I'm going to include foreground and sky hence the reason why I'm using the long lens it really helps and I'm around sort of 200 mil ish I am shooting this at 2.8 um, so for the video well, that's why it's uh, got a real shallow depth of field but that obviously won't be a problem so yeah this is uh, this is what I'm thinking so for this shot to work, I'm going to get nice and high, eye level. This is where Nikki comes into her own, or his own. And set the legs as high as they'll go. And we're going to try and isolate our little scene that we've just talked about on camera. We really hope that audio come out. <laughs> We'll talk you through. Well, I'll talk you through exactly what I'm doing here now. Organise my composition again, anyway. So yeah, we get Nikki nice and high. Put myself roughly where I think I need to be, which is here. And I'm going to jab these spikes into the ground. That is nice and sturdy. And with Nikki, I've got a nice levelling base. Not that it really matters on this sort of shot because I'm not doing a pano. And for some reason I always like the main ball head on the right. 
Just a bit of OCD. I'm going to grab the camera. Use a collar mount because I can. It just stops the camera tipping so much. Uh, nose diving. I'm just going to do this collar mount up. Right, let's dive in to exactly how I'm going to frame this shot up. Right, so now we are around the back of my camera. And I'm going to try and frame this up for you now. As you can see, I don't want any of this foreground. I don't want any of this bright nonsense up here. I don't really want to include too many trees on the right hand side here. I kind of just want this dark one in, maybe, I don't know. Because if I include too much, I'm putting this tree too far to the right. And if I go wide to try and pull this tree closer to the middle, I then include sky and uh, ground and sky, which I don't want. So what I'm intend on doing is zooming somewhat into this. And I want to not include too much sky. So I'm going to go down to about there. And I'm going to use this tree on the left here as like a buffer to stop the eye drifting off. There's a lovely trees over here as well. And we're looking at something like that. Now the reason why I got drawn to this uh, was kind of what we already spoke to, was this, this oak here. And I do like the oak that's down in behind this tree here. Um, but I have decided to use this tree in front, in the middle, to hide the tree in behind, which simplifies the image and just makes it all better, a cleaner image in my opinion. And then I'm using this tree here as a, as a buffer, like I just said. Now the reason, I re the reason I did pick this out was because of this clearing up above. It's causing light to come down from above. Let me just focus that again. It's causing light to come from above and light up all this top piece. And then you've got, because it's wet and dark and it's been raining all overnight, I, will, I like the fact that it's sort of, it's made these limbs all dark and rich. Uh, and then against, which helps cause, give separation and layers against this new growth of forest. So it's kind of like, um, it tells a story this image. It's very, it's very green, it's very fresh, very vibrant. But it does tell a story of old and new. Uh, you've got them old oaks in the background um, against the new, the new life, and it just I just think it works really well. Um, so yeah, from in terms of settings, I'm going to shoot this base ISO, and we are going to go. I always get drawn mm, f13 possibly, and shutter speed. Sorry, wrong way. Shutter speed is going to be—it's going to be quite long. Uh, I'm not too worried about the histogram. That looks quite bright to me. I think you could probably get away with around there, around 1.3 seconds, f13. And I always focus my images manually. I'm going to focus on this tree here. One in the middle, you can always put the focus peaking on if you want to, just to help you. You can see the focus peaking there in F13, it's telling me everything's sharp. I have learned that that is a lie. <laughs> um, you use it as a guide, but I don't, never tend to, um, I never tend to trust it 100%. It's very still, so 1.3 seconds is is not I'm not worried about that at all really. I'm just gonna take a test shot. I've got a two second timer. Actually no it's not it's a five second timer. Shooting on telephoto around 180 mil. 
and there is the first shot of the morning. Now this is just a test shot, once I'm out, once you're out of my way, I will perfect this, composition slightly, focus, sharpness, but focusing here, focusing here, an F13, anything that's in front, into distance will be sharp and anything close like this, um, because I'm shooting way off into the distance, is still going to be sharp. Uh, and if I really if I want to go to F16 to get slightly more corner sharpness, uh, which I think I'll be fine with this. Let me just check that. Normally this lens is even sharper in F16 on the corners. Yeah, as you can see, it's a bit soft up in this... Uh, no, it's not. That's a lie. F13 is, is going to be kind of where I want to be, if I'm honest. Yeah, so uh, I hope you enjoyed that little little piece of camera of me explaining how I frame this image. I like this green. It's, sort of, it's like almost forming like a natural window to this lovely oak here. And these trees are just helping balance the image on the left-hand side. Um, and when I get this back to Photoshop, there is a bit of atmosphere, a little bit of glow from up above, which is what I was drawn to originally, and I can enhance that in Photoshop and make this image feel very painterly. Um, yeah, so yeah, I'm very excited to uh, get on and edit this one. So I think I've grabbed this shot. Uh, it's, it isn't a world beater. It isn't <laughs> going to win any awards, but I do think it shows the morning's conditions, tells a story of this time of year uh, quite nicely. Um, them greens have a nice frame, they're nice and rich, shows new life and the old oaks tell the story of the old, of this of this particular woodland, it's full of old oaks uh, which gives you dimension, gives you layers. Uh, yes the image is very green but with that little bit of ambient light from above uh, from the open canopy I'm sure I can uh, enhance that in Photoshop and make this image stand out and pop really nicely. So I just want to talk a little bit about what wooded photography, uh, what I look for and what it means to me. When I'm, I've spotted this because I am looking very far, my, my blinkers are not narrow, I'm really wide, I'm looking for things way off in distance in the sky or even down on the ground and I'm also looking for that intimate shot that is right in my face. Um, so by doing that, you are increasing your chances of getting an image. And two, I just think it's a more enjoyable experience if you open yourself up. Um, it's very easy to get frustrated in the woods, uh, which is no good for anyone. Um, so yeah, uh, it's just it's all about keep being open-minded, being open-minded, and obviously having the ability to have a long lens. If you haven't got a long lens, I know it's, I do appreciate it's a bit more difficult uh, to shoot long, obviously. Um, but yeah, having a longer lens really does help in the woods, in my opinion. It just gives you uh, a plan B, and most of the time it's my plan A, if I'm honest. Uh, I, I really enjoy shooting vignettes further away into the distance. So yeah. One down, let's see if we can get one more. So before I move on, uh, I've literally just moved a foot to the right uh, and now I'm shooting the same way but I've just moved to the right slightly. Um, I really like this scene. Um, it's, it's an old gnarly branch that sort of twists and arches its way into the shot from the top right frame. Uh, and I'm using a little tree on the right which is a tree in the distance sort of hold you in. I don't want you I don't think I don't think your eye will draw out that way. I think it will find its way into the centre, which is a kind of the thought process behind this shot. And you've got two nice oaks on the left. Uh, one behind the gnarly one and then one further away uh, which hold the eye in from from the on the which creeping out from the left hand side. I'm eliminating the foreground, eliminating the sky. I'm right out at 200mm, which is causing a slight issue with depth of field. I don't want 
this shot not to be sharp. Um, I want the f that gnarly oak to be sharp in, the far, in the, my closer subject. I also want it to fall off gradually. Um, I don't want it to be um, blurry from the gnarly all the way into the background. I want there to be some. I want there to be sort of detail. Um, these midges are absolutely driving me nuts. Um, so yeah, I'll talk you through this shot uh, again now. The second shot from literally a foot to the right, and, uh, and we'll go from there. But yeah, I like. I, did, I, I like. I like this one. It's nice. So there is that many midges. It is turning my sensor off and on. <laughs> so I do apologise if it goes off. Right, so here's my shot. I've really taken it. Uh, but I can show you my settings for those people that are interested. You can see my histogram is pretty much where you want it to be. It's slightly to the left. Um, but you can see from my light meter that my light meter is telling me that I'm bang on. Um, I've decided to go F16, like I said in the previous clip to camera, uh, which has dropped my exposure down to 1.6 instead of 1.3. Uh, again, it isn't a problem because it is so still, nothing is moving. Uh, I'll just go back to my main image. Now, I love this tree here. And then you've got this nice tree in the distance here on the right, which is, oh, which is helping... Um, hold your eye in and it's lovely green sort of like a almost like a tealy coloured green in this this shrubbery around here and around this on the side and then in the middle it's like this new growth get lost man new growth in here which is causing like a nice colour separation uh, naturally and if you if I zoom in you see F16 has given me incredible sharpness bit of fall off in the distance there but that's just natural and you can see just by this middle section I don't know if you can see on, the, on your camera but there is a little bit of ambient light from the clearing up here and it's just sort of light in the end of this branch up which is really nice uh, which is what drew me to the shot uh, was this gnarly this gnarly branch all lit up now this is a tree on the right which is a part of the gnarly uh, no it's not sorry it's a tree in the, in the slightly further back this is this branch here although it doesn't look like nothing it doesn't look very important but that to me just holds the eye in from the right hand side like this one does from the left um, yeah so it's it's just it's a it's again it's no world beater um, but it is an image that I think will work quite nicely um, and it does demonstrate exactly what, what I've been trying to talk to you about in this video it is looking for shapes, f textures, whether they're far away or in front of your face um, it's all about keeping your eyes open and broadening your mind to all kinds of aspects of photography especially in the woods um, so yeah, yeah I hope you enjoyed this, another little insight into my mind and why I'm taking this shot um, because I think it's important I get asked quite a lot about um, why how how I process and uh, we'll get on to look we'll get onto that a little bit in a minute about processing um, but yeah this is uh, not not bad morning not bad morning at all So before we go, uh, I just wanted to talk a little bit about my post-processing ideas, what I've got planned for the channel. Um, I think what I'm going to do is offer post-processing videos, but via a 
join subscription. Um, I haven't worked out how much that's going to be, but I don't panic. I don't think it's going to be a huge subscription. Uh, it might only be between one and five pound a month. I haven't really decided yet how I'm going to do that uh, because it is going to be extra content. I'm not going to stop doing a video a week. I will be doing uh, extra processing videos but only to members of my channel um, uh, because I get asked so, so many times to do post-processing videos um, and I just think that one um, it would be a great idea and I would love it if people were interested still even though um, they're paying a monthly subscription a tiny fee um, that obviously would help me financially uh, support the channel and two people then if they really wanted to watch them they can and it's not going to affect the people that are not interested in uh, post-processing videos I don't want people to tune out um, and think oh, I'm not watching this video this week I'd like, I want to see in the field videos so I just think it's, it's a fair way of doing it um, and also it helps support me as a, as a photographer moving forward um, so yeah I hope I hope you like the idea of that um, but uh, please let me know in the comments down below how do you feel about that um, and how much would you be prepared to pay per month um, it might only be one or two videos I'll try and get two videos out per month uh, as a post-processing video um, so just just let me let me know down in the comments below so what I'm going to do now is uh, continue this vlog on as a part two um, I quite enjoy doing these part one and part twos so thank you so much for watching uh, part one of my woodland photography not, not like a tutorial more like a walkthrough uh, and I hope you join me for part two uh, where we're going to talk further in depth into how I shoot and what I look for just continue on walking through this wonderful woods uh, so thank you so much for watching I'm Photo Ninja uh, and also thank you to everyone who's purchased prints um, you should have them by now uh, thank you again so much for supporting my uh, work uh, this, this year the Blue Bowls was just absolutely amazing I got a nice few selections of images from that so yeah thank you to everyone who bought prints uh, and they are available on my website so if you are interested in a print then please don't hesitate, head over to the website photoninjaphotography.com and uh, they will be on there and if you are interested in a workshop also a uh, wooden workshop then uh, you can book yourself in on the website as well right let's crack on with part 2 I will see you next week, enjoy your Sunday ciao